Although history has revealed that the Vikings were the first Europeans to reach North America, they left no known records of their explorations. 500 years after the Vikings landed, Giovanni Caboto, a 15th century Italian seafarer, was the first known European to reach the mainland of North America. Why did this Italian explorer change his name to John Cabot? And how did he set the stage for English to become the dominant language we speak in America today? Born in Venice around 1450, Giovanni Caboto learned to navigate the seas while working for a Venetian trading company. He honed his skills sailing far across the Mediterranean Sea to reach its eastern ports, where the rich spices and silks of Asia were available for purchase. After Columbus's voyage to the West Indies, Caboto decided that he too would try to find a westerly route to Asia, believing, like Columbus, that the lands across the Atlantic Ocean were part of Asia. However, Caboto thought that by taking a more northerly route, his trip would be shorter than the southerly one Columbus had chosen. In 1494, Caboto moved to Seville and offered to sail a transatlantic expedition for King Ferdinand of Spain. But Ferdinand gave all of Spain's expeditions to rival explorer Christopher Columbus. In 1496, using the English version of his name, John Cabot, he petitioned King Henry VII of Britain for a charter to navigate a northerly route to Asia. At the time, England was a weak European kingdom compared to the Mediterranean kingdoms of Spain, Portugal, and France. Henry VII envied the profits those countries had made through settlement and trade in the New World. He eagerly financed the voyage, hoping to make England a seafaring powerhouse. Henry specified that Cabot must give him a portion of any treasure he found. In May 1497, aboard the ship Matthew, Cabot and his crew of 18, including his son Sebastian, set sail from Bristol, England. Fifty days later, he spotted the coast of an uncharted land. Cabot named it Newfoundland, known today as Newfoundland in Canada. He was the first known European to reach the North American mainland. Cabot's journey was 20 days shorter than Columbus's. He had found a quicker route to Asia. Of course, he was not in Asia at all, and there was no treasure in sight. However, Cabot did report seas teeming with codfish. The cod were so plentiful, the crew needed only to dip baskets into the water and the fish would swim in and fill them up. Cabot went ashore and claimed the land for the King of England. Upon his return to Bristol, Henry VII awarded Cabot the modest sum of 10 pounds, the equivalent of a year's salary, for discovering what was believed to be an island off the coast of China. He also awarded Cabot a grant for a second visit to Newfoundland. In May of 1498, Cabot set sail with 300 settlers on five ships, planning to start a colony. For nearly 500 years, no records were found about this second voyage. John Cabot was believed to have died at sea but documents recently have emerged that might place Cabot and some of his crew members back in England, suggesting that he successfully completed the journey. Whatever the outcome of the second voyage, all historians agree that John Cabot is responsible for the first English claims in the New World. His shorter, northerly route across the Atlantic became a fast path for British colonization and opened the Canadian shores to a huge trade in cod, which kept Europe fed for centuries. The British monarchy dominated the cod industry, garnering more power and wealth than Cabot could have ever imagined, and set the stage for England's domination of North America.